Hey guys, welcome back to another 1.19 Skyblock episode. So the plan for today is to finish the dye farms. Last episode we made the cocoa bean farm for brown dye. I want to start today with the cactus farm so we can also make green dye. And then later in the episode uh, the two tall flower farm for yellow and red and orange and so on. And a small flower farm for cornflowers so we can also get some blue dye. Right, so let's start with the cactus farm. I already have a design, we just need to adjust it a little bit. So this is the design right here. It's actually the small cactus farm we built on Cycraft in order to get cactus for the bigger cactus farm. It was the, the starter cactus farm here. So it fits really well inside of one chunk. It's actually chunk aligned here. You can see with the lines. It's nicely inside of one chunk. It's 8 by 8 cactus. So it works out pretty well here with the water sources. The items get flushed uh, towards those drop shoots here. So we only need to place one water source in the middle and all the items that would fall in the middle also drops through the, the water sources. So that's quite convenient. Just need to place the sign here on the side. And then we got one water source in each corner. And we actually don't need the, the nether brick fence here. Just increases the rates a little bit. Some of the items uh, get flushed against the nether brick and then drop straight down instead of maybe a bit of momentum landing on a cactus further below. So you really don't need those nether brick fences. Um, in the Cycraft episode, actually measure the difference between placing all of the nether brick fences or walls would also be a possibility or not, and it's less than 5%. So I adjusted the design already a little bit for our Skyblock world. I made it a bit more interesting. So just having a glass box around, I used a couple of frog lights and warped Stripped warp stem. We have a lot of those now. Also swapped the color of the sand, switched to red sand just because it's different. And I replaced all of the like birch fences with warped fences and birch signs with warped signs. Okay, so <laughs> the plan is actually to do a live stream and just build as much as I can in four to five hours. I don't think I'm gonna finish the whole tower, um, but I just want to see how far I can get with this. Okay, um, in terms of rates power, so this literally goes from bedrock to sky limit. This would be roughly 12,500 cactus power. So definitely more than enough. Yeah, we'll see how much I can get done. So the plan was definitely to build the cactus from somewhat close to yeah, the concrete farming setup. So I decided to have it right here close to the slime farm. By the way, I think the slime farm is a ride off at this point. Because I wasn't really careful with building all of this stuff, I'm pretty sure you would have a lot of slime spawning if you turn off the mob switch you know, here in the last chamber district. So right now I still have a lot of slime left, just from running the farm in the beginning of the, the series. But I think at some point you either need to fix a lot or just make a new one. This was quite nice to start out with, but yeah, I feel like... A modernized slime farm at some point might be necessary, but there's still a ton of slime left. You can actually quickly check it. Put the slime blocks in the chest here. Almost got a double chest, so this should last a while. Unless we uh, waste it for, I don't know, as a scaffolding block too much. Okay, so <laughs> cactus farm would go right here. In case we actually finish it, it would go up this high, which is kind of crazy. But it's of course quite a materialist for this. You can check it out. So it's 25,000 warped slab. I decided to use actually the warped slabs because um, if you build with wood, it's always quite convenient because you can bring a lot of materials. You can just craft it on site then uh, into the slabs compared to like stone slabs. Um, yeah, basically one lock is eight slabs while one stone is only two slabs. So I don't have elytra yet and I don't have the shulker boxes yet. So getting the materials up there is actually going to be you know, a bit of a problem. So I'm already thinking maybe some water elevator just while building uh, would make sense here. Okay, so what else do we have? Um, 20,000 stained glass. Uh, <laughs> I already made several trips over to the sand farm. And I think at this point I haven't really had the urge so far to go to the end to upgrade you know, some of the things I have, but all this running around, not having an elytra, not having shulker boxes, 
that's kind of wearing me down now. So I think maybe we go to the end soon. Um, so we can get Schalke boxes and Elytra at least. That would, would help quite a bit with the other projects. Especially when they get this large now. Uh, anyway, so I've been <laughs> at the sand farm a couple times. Been smelting glass already for more than an hour. We have you know, two double chests. A bit of sand left. I can probably already put it into the furnace again. Uh, I've been refilling the furnaces with lava. Constant here already. It's actually time again. Might grab some buckets. So this lava setup here actually works pretty well. This is actually a really nice early game. Uh, yeah, furnace array or furnace system just with the lava. It kind of works out. But eventually also want to upgrade to a bit more automated system. Okay. Um, what else? Did I, I already have the red sand. I already have the, the frog light. Another two trips to the sand farm and to the frog light farm. Cactus is actually the issue right now. So the ice is just for the water sources. I actually started only with a single cactus. I only bought a single cactus from the wandering trader. And that's really gonna be a slow start. Um, because it like takes 20 minutes on average to grow one cactus. And uh, we have two cactus items now. I placed the other one down, but technically now Oh, it's exponential growth. Now we can already double our production. Let's get another cactus. There we go. And now we doubled our production. Yeah. I think I'm actually gonna build one of the slices here real quick of cactus farm and run this for a while so we can actually start. So I'm ready for the live stream and have a bit more cactus. And there's the first layer. I also doubled the cactus production. Now we got four. So we can even double it four times more. We get 64 for this layer. I think I'm gonna build a second one already because I think one cactus produces like 2.3 cacti per hour. So one layer should be roughly 150 cacti per hour, which isn't much yet. So I think I actually need like four or five of those layers to get started. So there we go, already got a second layer. This time I even measured how long it takes to build one. It was a bit over five and a half minutes. But I already know from yeah, building the big cactus farm that there's a more efficient way than doing it layer by layer like this. For example, placing the slabs of the next layer is quite helpful because then you can place the fences on the underside of the slabs, which saves some time compared to uh, doing the offset placement here. So that will save some time. Pretty sure if I get used to the smaller layout, um, I can probably push the time for layer under four minutes or maybe four minutes or something like that. So there is a bit over 95 layers in total times four minutes. This would be yeah, roughly 400 minutes. That's maybe seven hours. Hmm. I said I want to do as much as I can in four to five hours, but I think the whole tower is actually not that far away from it. Maybe I'll we'll go for the whole tower. Five layers of cactus farm have been built. And I afk this for quite a while. Let's check it out what we got so far. So that should be, yeah, over 30 stacks of cactus. It's definitely not enough to build all of it. But, I mean, it's probably gonna take longer to build it than to, to use it up at this point. So I guess I'm ready for the big stream and time lapse.
so I definitely got carried away just a little bit there and I actually finished the cactus from from void to sky limit couldn't build it any taller almost 400 blocks high and like 95 layers of cactus form it's like a yeah skyscraper so in total it took me 11 hours to build this after to be honest after six hours I had enough but then I just keep going I haven't streamed in like three months and yeah just <laughs> was really determined to finish this just check it out how tall this is now yeah <laughs> up to sky limit just really <laughs> massive and of course by streaming tons of people ask why i'm building this huge cactus farm what do you need so much cactus for and i was asking myself that and came to the conclusion i can also make an xp bank out of this so of course initial motivation was to get some cactus green um but yeah we're getting 12,500 cacti per hour now this farm here you can also see how much is incoming just yeah all the time if i stand below of course, it's actually only uh, four percent as large as the cactus one we built on Cycraft, so it's actually still quite feasible. <laughs> build it in one day. Yeah, so we're getting twelve thousand five hundred cacti per hour. That means if I smelt all of that, I would be getting um, twelve thousand five hundred XP per hour. But of course, I would need fuel for that. Uh, here on the side, I still have the water elevator. You can also go up there. It's actually quite a journey now, and I actually forgot to. I start a water bucket because it was after an achievement. Okay, let's actually turn on game override again as we can see. Also quite interesting, somebody on stream told me if you hold um, shift in the bubble elevator, you actually go faster. You check top left, they don't hold shift, it's like yeah, 11.1 meters per second if I hold shift, it's actually 11.9. And apparently if you swim forward, you can go even faster, so we're doing get to 12.4. Okay, but we're all the way, not all the way up. Ah, I didn't place <laughs> the last bit of uh, ice at the very top. Oh god, can we get out of this? Where's that enderpearl gonna land? Oh my god, I threw it past. Yeah, but this is gonna land in a void and gonna disappear. <laughs> Hopefully we can get out of this now. That was a better throw. <laughs> Still not quite there. Oh my god. Don't have any blocks on me. Okay, we fell a bit into the cactus farm. 20 blocks lower. Oh my god, I think I'm just gonna actually jump down and try this again. Um, so what actually what I do is I wanna place a bucket of water at the bottom to get this achievement where you have to jump from the top of the world to bottom of the world. Okay, there we go. Now we're all the way up. Um... I think I can place one more block here, so we could put a roof on top, or actually two more blocks, but that's it. So we could still put a roof on this, but we, we couldn't add one more layer of cactus farm, unfortunately. Unfortunately. It doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> and that's how high you are. we are. Those are just slime chunks. Okay, also I got um, Distant Horizons again. Last couple of weeks I didn't have it because I was just yeah, lingering ar around the base there. But you can now see the, the world from the very top. Actually quite cool. Okay, now let's get that achievement. I placed a bucket of water all the way down there. Let's see if we can hit it. We missed it, we just hit the slime blocks. Should be fine as well. A bit to the left, I guess. And... I didn't get it? What? Why? Maybe I have it already. I almost feel a little bit scammed, free fall from the top of the world, build them to the bottom of the world and survive. I think we were actually not at the very top, I could have like pillared up two more blocks, that's why I didn't get it. Um, let's try again. Now we're really all the way up there. Okay, let's try it again. See, we don't hit terminal velocity as far as I know, it's like 78 meters per second. There we go, yeah, it just wasn't all the way up there. So I'm also gonna keep this temporary bubble elevator at least until I have an elytra. So we can get to the top of the world quite easily this way in case we want to. Um, but once I have an elytra I can fly there uh, on my own and then we're gonna remove the elevator. I was using sand at the top uh, because I can remove it quicker later anyway. Okay, so yeah, building this also made me realize I should probably now really uh, progress all the way to the end. 
so we can get an elytra and shulker boxes as well because it would make it just much more convenient um so i was able to always build six layers with the materials i could stuff in my inner chest and in my inventory and then i had to jump back down and if my shulker boxes i could have kept building um a lot longer before having to jump down and then the elytra i can also fly up quicker don't need to build elevators anymore one hand is kind of a shame kind of like the, the aspect of like having infrastructure around in the world to get around like having elevators or piston bolts elytra is like the the solution for everything almost makes makes the player a little bit overpowered but definitely yeah if there is a way to get this kind of a convenience i'm gonna get it but uh i feel like elytra was sometimes a bit of a mistake anyway um so yeah next episode we're probably gonna try to progress to the end. So you can already make Ender Eyes, we just need to search for a stronghold. Those are gonna be interesting because either I look it up or we have to bridge around a bit. Yeah, and then we can try to fight that dragon in the void. And the way to get the Elytra is you need to have an Ender Might that has I think the slow falling effect and the levitation effect at the same time. So that means you need a Shiker. And we get a Shiker if you defeat the Ender Dragon a second time. That means we would need end crystals, which we need gas tears for. Yeah, we're right now definitely <laughs> still in the phase where we have to build farms to progress. So we need a ghast farm first. Um, so I guess we won't get our elytra right away in one episode. Uh, need to maybe start with the ghast farm. Um, anyway, so yeah, the elevator will be removed. And let's get back to the cactus items. Um, yeah, the plan is now to make an XP bank. We can smelt this for XP and this is just running all the time. So we can get 12,500 XP per hour. Just stand in a base somewhere where it's within random tick range. But of course we need fuel for this. And we have discussed it on stream. We came to the conclusion that's probably going to be the most interesting um, if I'm going to use kelp for this. So I can autocraft the dried kelp into kelp blocks. And yeah, use the fuel we get from a kelp farm um, for the, the XP bank. Now it's just a question of which type of kelp farm. I, I was thinking uh, a farm that I actually don't need to turn off would be best. Uh, that would mean I can't really use a flying machine one or in general rule of thumb, any farm that has a piston extender you can't just unload or walk away. Um, for, for example, that moss farm that I have uh, here has a double piston extender, uh, some precise timings. If I yeah, just leave this running and just walk away, then it will break. It's always, <laughs> it's, it's really unfortunate. If people watch my tutorials, like um, yeah, with the moss farm, and I don't point it out a hundred times that you have to turn the farm off if you leave, they, they're just gonna leave the farm running and then complain that my farm doesn't work. Uh, yeah, You need to turn farms off if they're a little bit more complex than a cactus farm. Just how it is. There's really no way, like, especially with chunk borders, you could partially unload a farm, that would already break it. Everything is a little bit more complex, definitely breaks if you unload it. So we can definitely make a kelp farm that doesn't, doesn't have any flying machines or double piston extenders or anything like that, but it's probably gonna get more expensive. So there's definitely no doubt about it. In case you wanna get a lot of items with the least amount of effort, then a flying machine based kelp, sugarcane, bamboo farm is always best. Um, the flying machine itself is a bit over a dozen blocks and you can harvest hundreds of kelp plants. So yeah, the farm itself is also not complicated. So this would be a flying machine based one. Basically, just need to build a flying machine and then a clock that launches it every so often. You can use a daylight detector and that's it. It's super simple. But of course, if I have this running and then just disconnect or leave the chunks, it could get stuck. But that's always the issue. So yeah, let's try to design a farm. It's probably going to be easy where we just harvest the kelp with a single piston. Um, Either we detect the kelp growing, similar to like a sugarcane farm, and then break it, or we just clock everything. But I think the detection-based farm might be better because it yeah, yields more per plant in comparison to the clocked farm. Um, let's try it out. One more thing before I actually start designing, I did the math 
to see how much uh, how many kelp plants for the farm we even need in the first place. So 1375 kelp plants would be enough to satisfy the need to smelt 12,500 cacti. So of course uh, I'm going to use the dried kelp blocks and in order to dry the kelp we also need fuel for that. So always some of the, the kelp items we get will be used to yeah, dry more kelp that we can then use for the cactus furnace array. So did the math, 1375 is needed. I think I'm gonna add a bit of a leeway and go for like 1600 kelp plants. So quite a large farm actually. Could you use three observers like that to make it more compact? But of course it's not cheap anymore, but to be honest it's not that much of a problem for us because we yeah, have a quartz farm with the bartering setup. We do have a cobble farm now and I can always try it in a redstone. So hmm, I would actually prefer that. So I think that's what a module could look like. So the items you know, get flushed or float up and get flushed over against the wall here and would drop down and from there to the smoker setup like this. But I just realized this is actually a little bit flawed because what could happen, it's unlikely, but eventually it will, is that the kelp grows and then immediately in the next tick it can grow again into the flowing water, turning the flowing water into a water source. And of course this type of collection wouldn't work anymore. Yeah, what we can always do is add another layer of water that is like waterlogged science. So without a hitbox that prevents the kelp from growing in there and then have the flowing water above, but it's always like a lot of extra effort. Is there any way around this? I can also simulate here the problem. If I just set the game rule, random tick speed really high, then it's gonna happen sooner. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's that's probably enough. Now, yeah, as you can see, now we got water sources at the top. And then the items would go nowhere. Cause different type of item collection. Hmm, what could we do? If you have water sources here, we could flush everything to the side. That would work. But the item that would land here in the middle, even yeah, if one side goes to the right and one to the left, basically the momentum cancels itself out and goes nowhere. So the item would also not get uh, flushed anywhere. So I think you have to yeah, just put in signs here and have the flowing water above. So basically you would need to place something like dirt blocks. Then the water above, then we remove this. And then we place signs, one layer lower. That have to be waterlocked. Oh my god, that's gonna be a lot of effort. Yeah, like this. Oh yeah, we probably also have to actually waterlock those as well with buckets. But I guess, unless I want my farm to break over time, that's what I gotta do. Oh yeah, there's of course also the option to just bone meal the kelp like this. You have a bone meal farm, why am I not using that instead? Um, as I said earlier, I kind of want a setup where I don't need to worry about turning it on and off all the time. So just run in the background and I don't need to worry about it. And the moss based bone meal farm is definitely not dead. Uh, it makes like 12,500 bone meal power, which is exactly what we need. But yeah, it would break horribly if I, if I keep it running while like leaving the world or just going somewhere else. Um, so not really an option. Uh, why not make a bone mill farm that yeah, just produces bone mill on the side without breaking if I unload it? For example, why not compost the cactus I get from the cactus farm? Well, uh, yeah, it would be an option, but the big cactus farm that I spent 11 hours on building produces 1000 bone meal per hour. So I don't think it's an option to build it like 10 more times so I can <laughs> smelt a little bit of cactus. Uh, definitely not an option because then, in, yeah, I guess I could just build the flying machine based one. Uh, if something goes wrong there, the worst thing that happens is the flying machine gets stuck somewhere and I would need to launch it again. So I guess I'm just gonna build that module I made with the science and so on. It's gonna be quite some effort. Because I need like 1400 plants for this, so it's gonna be like 100 of those models I showed earlier. Uh, this one here. But it's still feasible. I guess I'm gonna go for that. Right, yeah. Let's do that next episode. Definitely this episode. I think it was a nice mix of creative and a lot of survival. <laughs> Spent 11 hours pulling the cactus farm. So 
yeah, I'm gonna finish to the sign, or maybe you have some ideas. I'm definitely gonna read the comments. Um, yeah, on on the kelp farm. Maybe there's also another idea. And then next episode we can build it, and then maybe work on the ghast farm so we can go to the end soon. All right, so that's it. Thanks guys for watching, and see you next time. Bye bye.